Hey, it's Keith Smith from PilotEdge.net doing another I5 video. I'm going to be doing the I5 rating today from Burbank over to Las Vegas McCarran. This is a brand new airplane for X-Plane 10, the Javier Roll-On uh, Jetstream 32. Pretty fancy looking airplane. Paint job's great. The avionics are actually pretty simple. It's going to be a slant alpha flight today, just VOR and DME. There is no FMS on this airplane. So we'll go ahead and get started. First thing we do is connect to the network, as always. Call sign 132KL Tango and Jetstream 32. Connected to pilotage. Get a flight plan filed. JS32 Slant Alpha, Burbank to Vegas, Van Nuys 9 departure. That's the SID, Daggett transition, and the Cresso 3 arrival. Cresso 3 is for turboprops and pistons. If you're using a jet for your flight, you should do Van Nuys 9, Daggett, and either the KPAC arrival for Arnav aircraft or the CLAR arrival for non Arnav uh, jets. We're going to shoot for 250, we'll actually see if we make it up there, and true airspeed of 290. I tried this at max gross and had trouble getting to that altitude, but we're a bit lighter today, so we'll see if it climbs a bit better. And we'll go ahead and file. We'll hop on board and get started. So close up the door. And hop up front. Before we do get started, I want to give you a quick tour of the uh, panel, which I think is spectacular. As you can see, they're doing real-time reflections on the gauges. They're really effective. I think that's a first for X-Plane. I know FSX, there are some payware planes that do it in FSX, but... Um, so we have independent co-pilot instruments, the HSI, run separately than the, um, than the pilot side. Got a Garmin 430, the Collins radio stack, a functional weather radar, a battery temperature display, which is new to me. Here's our engine gauges. Fuel. Anti-ISIS uh, right here. Then we have the pressurization system and hydraulic systems here. Parking brake, control lock. I'm actually going to undo the control lock now. There's some... all the trim systems. There's the emergency gear handle and hydraulic uh, pumps and things like that. You can pump the hydraulics by hand. Alright. So, that's a good start on the panel. We'll be working with the overhead fairly shortly for the startup, so... I'll save that till we're ready to start, which is now. Okay, I'm using the checklist that came with the aircraft. So we'll do the pre-flight checklist, chocks are set, DI switches are all off, and doors closed. And we've secured the door at the back. That's the pre-flight. Now we'll do the before start engine checklist. Parking brake is set. <coughs> lights off. All the lights are off. Essential avionics off. Non-essential avionics off. Generators off. Computers off. Ignition normal. AC control switch is set to normal. Electric master emergency switch is normal. Power levers to idle. That's done. Condition lever, condition lever down. That's done. That's them here. <coughs> Fuel cross feed. Shunt. Fuel quantity. I think we're running around half a tank by default. That's checked. Cooling flaps to auto. They're currently open, so we'll set that to auto. Should be a three position switch, so we're all set for auto. 
prop sync off. Annunciators test. Well, we need to switch the battery on first. Those two items, I think, are reversed in the checklist. So switch on the battery, and now we'll check the annunciators. Cancel. Zoom in on the panel and test the panel. Annunciator panel is functioning. Okay, main avionics on, and navigation lights on. I'll just do the beacon for now. Okay, it's the before start engine checklist complete. Okay, the airplane has two ways of starting the engine. There's a manual start mode, which is down here, where you handle the fuel management and the introduction of fuel. And there's the automatic start. We'll be doing the automatic start for today. So automatic start checklist, battery on, beacon on, voltmeter. Voltmeter has three modes, uh, ground, main, or uh, the battery. We want to show the voltage from the battery. Uh, Seatbelt sights on, signs on, and smoking on. Prepare, propeller area clear. I got nothing. Air ground switch should be set appropriately. We're on the ground, so I'll be doing ground. If we were starting on air, we'd put on, on uh, air. I'm going to start the left engine first, so reset the left engine generator. Verify our left and right generators are off. That's done. Ignition's normal. SRL computer on. Low pressure hydraulics cock open. And low pressure fuel cock open on both sides. Fuel boost pump on. Verify fuel pressure. There's fuel pressure there. Fuel condition lever, sorry, left condition lever to taxi. Okay, start, uh, sorry, select left engine and start the left. Look for EGT to remain below 650. Looking for the RPM to come up to at least 50%. And oil pressure attempts coming up. There we go. Alright, good start on one. Kill the boost pump, that's not on the checklist. But we're going to do it. Okay, bus time warning should be on. Left generator can come on. We see the voltage increase and we see the ammeter producing power. AC uh, transfer switch should be set to transfer. Bus tire reset. And now we'll start the right engine. Reset the right genera generator, verify off. Right fuel boost pump to on. F uh, right condition lever taxi, we've set them at the same time. Verify fuel pressure for the right engine. That's checked. Select the right engine and start. Same deal, look for EGT to remain below 650. RPM is coming up. And oil pressure and temp are present. Good start on two. Engine start light should go out. There it goes. Okay, bus tie warning on, right generator on. And the ammeter showed a drop for the left ammeter. Uh, sorry, the left uh, alternator because they're now sharing the load. Uh, bus tire reset and AC transfer back to normal and the automatic start checklist is complete. Alright, we can run the after start checklist essential and non-essential on. Navigation lights check. We'll do the nav light on, that's fine. De-ISO is required. None required for now. And we'll go ahead and set the radios. So let's fire up the radios. Alright then, Burbank clearance is 118.0. Okay, 
ground is 123.90. Burbank clearance, good morning. Jetstream 132 Kilo Tango with the numbers IFR to Vegas, request the I 5. Jetstream 132 Kilo Tango, Burbank delivery, good morning. Clarity to McCarran Airport, Van Nuys Niner departure, Daggett transition, that is filed. Maintain 5000, expect flight level 250, 5 minutes after departure. Departure frequency 134.2. Squawk 6547. Jetstream 132 Keltinga cleared to Vegas. Van Nuys Niner departure. Daggett transition is filed. Maintain 5. Expect 250 and 5. Departure 342. Squawk 6547. Jetstream uh, 2 Keltinga correct. Expect runway 15. Runway 15. Jetstream 2 Keltinga. Piper 293, John Lee Grant, runway 19 right, taxi via Alpha, Lima, cross runway 19 left. Okay, transponder set. We'll swap to ground. We can get tower ready then, which is going to be 187. Okay, so ground and tower set, and we're going to be using departure of 342. Okay, let's go ahead and brief the Van Nuys Niner SID. This is going to be quite complex to fly depending on if we get any shortcuts or not, but if we have to fly the full departure it's going to be an absolute handful. I can definitely say that in advance. Uh, okay, so for runway 15 it's going to be a right turn to heading 210, rate of vectors to Van Nuys VOR, which is going to be 113.1, .1, so we need that first. And that's set. The next thing we'll need, uh, that's the Van Nuys 255 radial out to IPHO, and that will be uh, using the 323 radial off of LAX. That's 113.6. That's it. After that we're going to need Ventura to identify uh, twine. So it's Van Nuys to IPHO to Twine, and Twine will be on the Ventura, which is 108.2, so we'll need one have one for that. That'll be the standby. Out to Lang, which will involve LAX again. A left turn there, at which point we'll be tracking Palmdale 114.5. will be in the NAV2 standby. So we've got four frequencies set there. After Palmdale, it'll be the 067 radial out to Ether, which is 15 DME, then a left turn direct Daggett, which is 113.2. We can't dial Daggett just yet. We're fresh out of radios for that. Okay, no, uh, no ATC altitudes for that. That's about it for the SID. That gets us safely out of Burbank, over to Daggett. And then we'll brief the Cresso 3 in the air. Set that initial altitude of 5000. And that's it. Radios are set. Oh, no, the one thing we can do right here, we'll fire up our DME over here. This tells us uh, NAV1 is set to Van Nuys, NAV2 is set to LAX. This saves us actually using the Morse code identifiers, which is going to save us valuable time today. And so a direct course to Van Nuys is going to be about 270. By the time we're in the air, that'll be a little bit higher than that, assuming we get direct Van Nuys. Otherwise, we'll be prepared to fly uh, the NAV-2. Let's pre-dial that. We can set that course for the NAV-2 to 323 off of LA. That's set. OK, so radios are set. We've got 293, John Wayne Tower, runway 19 right. Continuing with the after start, uh, after start checklist, trims, need to set trims. Actually had a pretty good view right there. Okay, trim set for takeoff. Flaps set, we'll go flaps 10. 
SRL computer is on, TTL computer I won't be using, and cabin pressure as required. Up at 250, we'll probably set a cabin altitude of about 4000. Go with that, max pressure differential is 5.5. There's supposed to be a red line, but I actually don't see it on the gauge. But the max pressure is 5.5 .5, uh, differential. Okay, after start checklist complete. Ready for taxi checklist. Okay, brake set and then chocks off. Okay, verify parking brake is set. It is. To clear the chocks, there's a menu here on the airplane. We can remove the chocks, which we'll do. We can add a GPU card Piper outside for a ground start. Context, say we can have a co-pilot who actually doubles as a burn victim. A little bit Freddy Kruegerish, we'll skip that. Uh, we can open the door and we can also alter the cabin lighting from here. Hide that menu and... Okay, so chocks off and now next is flight controls for incorrect. Okay, flight controls are good. Taxi lights on. There's a three position switch here. So this switch is for left landing light, this switch is three position. It can either be a right landing light, off, or taxi. In this case, I've got it set to taxi. Altimeter. Set to field elevation. Which is 712 feet. Autopilot is required. Oh, you know what, we will set that heading bug on the autopilot to 220. Sorry, 210. That's the initial heading. And we're at the Millionaire Ramp, which is on the northwest side of Burbank, for runway 15. We're expecting Via Bravo, most likely. And we're on ground, ready to go. Burbank ground, good morning, Jetstream 132 Kilo Tango at Millionaire with the numbers Taxi IFA. Jetstream 132 Kilo Tango, Burbank ground, good morning, runway 15, Taxi Via Bravo. 15 Via Bravo, Jetstream 2 Kilo Tango. Parking brake released, and we're off. Check my brakes. Working. Alright, joining Bravo. That's 1-5 ahead of us. Hyper 2 and 9 and 3. Resume on navigation, maintain appropriate VFR altitudes, contact circle approach 127.2. Okay, we do have one enunciation here, emergency lights. Getting an enunciation there, that's because we need to arm the emergency lights. I don't believe there's a checklist item for that. This stall enunciation is saying that the, uh, the stall warning system is not engaged. It'll detect a stall and then push the stick forward for you. Uh, not really smart to have that on during takeoff and landing. So leaving that off. One thing also not in the checklist is for the environmental controls, so we'll switch the fan on, set the temperature mode to auto, and that'll bring the cabin temperature to 25 degrees automatically. Turn the flow on, get some airflow going. We'll engage the weather radar now. Alright, once we get to the end, run the pre-takeoff and then we're going to swap to tower and set departure in the standby. Alright, parking brake set. Okay, before takeoff, parking brake set, flight instruments checked, engine instruments. Viper 293, Ontario reporting visibility 5 miles with light rain, 
check and fuel quantity is 500 check. overcast uh, verify engine you firewall still not sure what that means better. and power level to idle let's set pitot heat not needed for now the ice not required avionics are s not set let's swap that with a tower so 18.7 and departures 34.2 Okay, avionics are set, weather radar uh, is set, strobes to on, as well as landing light. So lights are set. Transponder on, that's already set. Flaps take off, that's done. TTL computers as required, prop sync as required. We'll turn on the prop sync and park and break off. Condition lever's high and then we're ready to go. Okay, condition lever is now set to high. Burbank Tower, good morning, Jetstream 132 Kilo Tango 15 IFR. Jetstream 132 Kilo Tango Burbank Tower, runway 15, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 15, Jetstream 132 Kilo Tango. So, this is a bit of a delicate flower, like most turboprops. You have to, uh, you're limited by torque and EGT, especially at the Viper lower two, levels. Nine three, roger. Expect the runway 26 left so seven, period. there's the red line on the AGT, and there's the red line on the torque, and this airplane will catch fire if you exceed those for any length of time. Final's clear, I should have checked that before. Okay, this is runway 15, we're going to be looking for 5,000. Let's just run it up till the governor kicks in. Okay, governor's kicked in, release brakes, and just increase power, watching torque and EGT, and trying to keep the plane straight. Oh, we've over -talked. there we go. Okay, just remember the yoke's in the way. That's a good speed to be lifting off at. And there is a pretty strong right turning tendency because they're both counter rotating props. Okay, we are up, wheels up. And at 400 feet, which will be about 1100 MSL, we'll start the right turn to 210. Jetstream 2 Kilo Tango, contact departure. Departure, Jetstream 2 Kilo Tango. Okay, there's the right turn. SoCal departure, jet stream 132, Kilo Tango 1600, climbing 5000. Okay, so we're in the right turn to 210. Jet stream 132, Kilo Tango, SoCal departure, radar contact, passing 3000, fly heading 270, climb and maintain 1 at 3000. Okay, at 3000 to heading 270, up to 1 3000, jet stream 2 Kilo Tango. Okay, and when we can, we're going to do the after takeoff checklist. So there's 270 on the heading bug, as a reminder, still flying 210 for now until we get to 3. Okay. Take off. Viper 293, Chino Airport, 12 to 1 o'clock and 4 miles. Ontario Airport, 12 o'clock and 8 miles. Report I just lost Ontario my inside. checklist. Hang on. Okay, after take off, gear up, we can go flaps up. That's 3,000 feet. Viper 293, Roger, VFR descent approved. Contact okay, Ontario Tower, 270 now on the heading, climbing to 13,000. Outside air temperature is good, we're just getting into IMC now. Okay, DI switches as required, we'll be putting in some pitot heat fairly soon, and uh, autopilot modes as needed. So, I'm going to get a climb established here, and we'll engage the heading mode, get the flight director on. Actually, engaging the mode goes straight into, uh, it fully engages the autopilot. We can do vertical speed mode. Let's do an altitude capture of 13,000. Ever 293, Ontario Tower, Roger, enter left, downwind, runway 26 left. Oh, that's altitude select. And I'm going to try this control wheel steering mode. I've read about it, but... Just stream 2, Kilo Dango, turn right, direct Van Nuys, resume the departure. Right turn, direct Van Nuys, and resume departure. Just stream 2, Kilo Tango. Wow, that actually worked really, really well. Um, I'll explain it in just a sec. Okay, go nav mode on that, heading to Van Nuys. 
Oh, I've got that pointing entirely the wrong way. That way. We're only four miles from Van Nuys, so this is going to be a bit of a tight intercept. Okay, double checking. It was still okay. We're down on torque. We're down on EGT, so we can add more power. As we climb, we'll be able to add more and more power in. There's my torque. There's my GT. Three miles from Van Nuys. This is going to be a rather rude intercept. Okay, so it's going to engage that. Uh, it's going to track that course to Van Nuys. And then once we get to it, we need to join the 255. Wow, this is definitely climbing better than my previous flight. Um, a lot lighter. It's making a big difference. I'll try and explain the control wheel steering when I can, but for now let me get this DI situation worked out. And... Okay, we can do... M5 for a tune if you're you're proceeding northbound across... Uh, the extended central line we'll there. Do long cycles on the Recommend prop. heading zero nine or zero to uh, rejoin downwind for two six left. Got our engine anti ice going, and that's enough of the icing for now. Heading mode. There's Van Ice. Join the two fifty five. Also, Piper two nine three. This seems to be a little bit low. Say altitude. That's done. Roger. Just in two kilo tango, if you're receiving Palm Dale, the shortcut is available. Uh, let's see. Now we'd like to fly the full departure for just from two kilo tango. Just from two kilo tango, Rich. Okay, we'll heat up the windshield. And we will turn on pedo heat. Both sides. Boeing 5030 Bravo, Limburg. Delivery, go ahead. We, are, we have more torque available, but we're fresh out of EGT. Can't go any higher on the EGT. Let's get some demist going on the windows there. Boeing 5030 Bravo, heavy clearance on request. We're on heading mode, and we're looking for that 255. And Piper 293, you're currently overhead the airport, but if I still have it's it inside. Okay, demist. Should help. And at 4 DME. Back for 293, roger. From 826 left, clear claim. That's 40 me there, we'll join the 323. So we never quite made it onto that 320, uh, the 255 radial. Let's go 323, and we'll swap over to LAX. As you can see, we're just passing through it now, so it's just in time, we'll engage nav mode. I'll still try and explain control wheel steering Just in particular, Tango, once you get a minute, contact LA Center 125.27. Thanks, 25.27, just for in 2 Boeing 5030, Bravo Heavy. Cleared to Ooh. Los Angeles International Airport. Pebble 4 departure. Seal Beach transition. Okay. We're joining Direct. the 323 outbound. Maintain 10,000. Departure frequency. This will be up to 24 planar, DME from LX. Squawk 7475. Boy, these come up quick. And then it's going to be 046. Is the next heading. About there. And this will be Twine. Uh, we're on NAV 2, so that means we can set our NAV 1 over to Ventura. 108.2. That's done. And here's 23. Going through zero Bravo Heavy, expect the runway 27. <coughs> we'll check in with Senna. Los Angeles Senna, Jetstream 132 Kilo Tango, 11,800, climbing 13,000. And let's Jet start that turn. Jetstream 132 Kilo Tango, LA Center, climb and maintain flight level 250. Flight level 250, Jetstream 2 Kilo Tango. I said this was going to be busy, didn't I? There's 25, flight level 250. Okay, we're done with LA for now. We'll go back to NAV1, which is now Ventura, and we'll spin that round to 046. Yep, 046, and that's done. So we can go NAV mode there, and verify 
This is Ventura, yep. Then it'll be Lang, after which it'll be a 038 heading. Let's see how we're doing weather-wise out there. Okay, we've got a RNTI song, we are below freezing, there's a temperature gauge there, just below freezing. Plane's doing well on the climb. Let's see if we can add a bit more power. And yeah, we've got a little bit of EGT left. Adding power. There we go. Twin Star 9017, Charlie Thorns Grand. And we're looking for the LA 342 radial. Now we'll know we're at that when the tail. Twin Star 7 Yankee Charlie, runway 29 or right. There's no DME for Lang. Via Juliet. Um, at least not off of Ventura. So what we're looking for, this is an RMI and this needle is pointing back at LA. When the tail of this gets to 342, there's 330, 320, sorry, 300, 310, 320, 330. Two, nine, three, we're currently on the left, 336, if that makes Remain sense. This Zoom right on in, that's 336, etc. This is going slowly. Once we cross 342, that will be the intersection of the LA 342 radial and the Ventura 046 radial, also known as Lang. And at Lang, we'll be making a turn to 038. Set that heading load. It's done. Okay, that's 340. 341. Alright, close enough for jazz. We'll go heading mode. And we are over Lang. Now we're going to start tracking Palmdale. 114.5, that'll be on the NAV2. That's set. And we'll set this over to NAV2 for the HSI. And the course there is 038, as we well know. And let's see how we did. We did well. Okay, NAV mode. We're now tracking to Palmdale, passing through 16,000. Let's check our pressurization, and through 10,000 we can um, kill the landing light too. Okay, actual cabin altitude is 4,000 feet, that's awesome, and pressure differential is 4.2, so still got some room to go on the pressurization, that's good. Kill the landing light. Boeing 5030 Bravo Heavy, Limburg Grand, runway 27, taxi okay, via Bravo. more lighting going here. Not in IMC anymore, let's kill the icing, the de ice. And we just continue this way to Palmdale. Let's verify we are actually tracking Palmdale. Should have been identifying that immediately when I tuned it. That's my mistake. And got 20 to go to Palmdale. After Palmdale, it's the 067. So we'll get that heading ready. 067 to Ether, which is 15 DME, then left turn to 058, to Daggett. We're going to need Daggett as our next VOR. We're currently flying on 2, so we can afford to set 1. So here we go, 113.2 is Daggett. We are not yet receiving Daggett. This has been an issue for me, so we are uh, actually just passing through the transition level now. So we can set the uh, altimeter to 992. Um, if we, if at Ether we can't identify Daggett, or we haven't not yet receiving Daggett, then we will just let the controller know. Okay, got standard altimeter set. And for the first time since I put the gear up, we can actually relax a little bit. look outside. We're back in the cabin. We're a casual bunch, so we'll go ahead and kill the seatbelt and smoking.
and 54293. Yeah, unfortunately, your uh, entry into Ontario wasn't uh, sufficient for a pass. Uh, you had some difficulties over the field there, but uh, everything else was fine. So if you do intend to refly it at some point, uh, just make sure you fly the proper downwind from the south side of the field. Beautifully spoken, Alex. Okay, we're just adding a little bit more power. Again, Affirm. we've got plenty of torque left, but we can't go just upon that. We have to take into account ETT as well. Affirm. Take care. All right, let's double check our climb checklist. Pressurization check done, landing lights off at flight level 100, seatbelt says required, TTL computers off at 14,000, we're not using them anyway, DI says required, pitot heater as required, altimeter standard, that's done. So, control wheel steering. You can basically point the plane where you want it, so while the autopilot's engaged, you hold down the control wheel steering button. That's a function you have to map in the sim, this is covered in the manual. There is no button on the panel for it. Um, so you hold down the control wheel steering button, put the uh, set the airplane pitch heavy, to whatever you'd like it to be, runway niner, and then and release the button. Eight and backtrack for runway two seven. Advise and that's how we push. set this pitch attitude for the climb. I believe you could also do the same thing and then engage vertical speed mode, and it would then hold that vertical Point speed that you initially commanded. It would hold the. Uh, the uh, vertical speed that you were commanding while you had the control wheel steering armed. But in this case it's just doing pitch hold, I suspect. Anyway, five miles to go to Palmdale. Let's just double check our plate. After Palmdale, 067, we have already set that, so it's really just going to be heading mode. Heading mode for the dog leg, and then once we're on that heading, engage the um, nav again, out to ether. And what we're looking for is reception of Daggett, ideally. So our NAV2, we can see it on the RMI, our NAV2 is set to um, Palmdale. And that's reflected both here on that light that says NAV2, and also on the HSI select switch, which is NAV2. We are still not receiving Daggett. Let's see if we can eke any more performance out of this. Eek, squeak, whatever the word is. Push, cajole, it's all good. Okay, a little bit more power coming in. It's doing the best job of tracking that course. Cessna 7 Alpha Tango. Uh, oh, we passed there. Palmdale. Boeing, uh, three That's a little bit sad, there. isn't it? Zero six seven, it is. In that case. Alright, it's set up a reasonable intercept for the zero six seven. So I missed the turn at Palmdale for Ether. We had more time than we did. It's Twin Star Hater 17 Yankee Charlie, Twin Star, you up? Your, your damper should be on. That wasn't on the checklist for some reason. And we can change the lighting, by the way. Twin Star 7 Yankee Charlie, runway 29 right, cleared for takeoff. Right close lineup. traffic approved. Report midfield downwind each time. That didn't do much. We can turn a reading light on. Quite nice, isn't it? We'll do that. And we've got eight miles to go to Ether, but we're still not receiving Daggett. So we're going to anticipate that we're not going to be able to pick that up. So we'll set the heading mode to 058 and just inform ATC. Well, why don't we give it till a couple of miles before? We've still got six miles to go to Ether. And we've got 400 feet to go till flight level 250. Pretty much, I suspect, at the limits of the pressurization system. Boeing 5030 Bravo Heavy, runway 27, cleared for takeoff, wind 170. Indeed, the cabin altitude is actually 6,000 feet, and you can see the. So it's ignoring the commanded cabin altitude, which I asked for, which was 4,000. It can't do it without exceeding the 5.5 pressure differential, so it's not bothering. So I'll plan on that from now on. When we're up at the service ceiling, it's more like a 6,000 foot cabin. And we should be leveling off. That's happening. Very good. And 
two miles to Etha, still no Danget. We'll give him a call. Center jet stream one tree two kill tango. Jet stream two kill tango, go ahead. Jet stream two kill tango. We're not yet receiving Danget requests that we depart Etha heading zero six zero until we're receiving. Jet stream two kill tango. Approved as requested and report once you are receiving and proceeding direct Danget. Okay, zero six zero and then direct Danget when receiving and we will advise when that is, jet stream two kill tango. Alright, we're past ether, so let's go into heading mode now. Okay, zero six zero, so let's change over to F one, which is dang it. Point three zero bravo heavy contact circle so departure. And we're just waiting for these flags to disappear. So we're on heading mode until we actually receive that. Alright, here we go. Here's Daggett. Now we don't need to use the course that's on the star. He said direct Daggett when receiving. As it turns out, they're one and the same thing. So we'll engage nav mode. And we'll inform the controller. Center jet stream 2 kill tango receiving Daggett. Jet stream 2 kill tango, thanks. Alright, after Daggett, it's going to be the 047 radial. Mr. 7 Yankee Charlie, we're made 29 radial. Up to 44 radio. DME, which is Danby, and then we'll be heading to Boulder City VOR. No problem. Let's see, Boulder City is 16.7. Actually receiving Boulder City now, and there's uh, DME on deck. All right, not too much else going on. We're in cruise. We'll just uh, actually run the cruise checklist. Pressurization check. We've already done that. De ice is required. Peter here is required. We'll pick up the video again at Daggett, I think. Just stream uh, two kilo tango across the week at and maintain one two thousand. Make care and altimeter two nine hundred seven two. Cross wig and maintain 12000 Jetstream 2 kill taken. Boeing 30 Bravo Heavy. Carrying a portable radio with me to the toilet. At and maintain 7000 at 210 knots or less. Expect vectors for ILS runway 25 left approach. Cessna 717 Alpha Tango Santa Monica Tower Altimeter 298 Niner. 14 miles to Daggett. Proceed southbound for the time being and so I did make one change. Later on. The um, once you get up to the higher true airspeeds, I guess the uh, prop governor can only course in the blade so much, and it wasn't able to keep the RPM below 100%. And there is uh, power plant limitation limitations for that. As shown here. So continuous is up to 100% and up to 5 minutes between 100 and 101.5, etc. So we couldn't keep the power where it was. We were no longer EGT and torque limited, we were actually RPM limited. And there's no way to pull the RPM back manually, it seems. Let's work out our top of descent. If we plan on doing about 280 over the ground, well, 300 over the ground would be 5 miles a minute. We need to drop from 250 down to 12, that's 13,000 feet. If we can do 2,000 feet a minute, then that's about 6.5 minutes. And if we're doing 5 miles a minute for 6.5 minutes, that's 33 Australian miles. Australian 081, Las Vegas. So delivery. 33 miles clear out is when we start on down. to Limburg Airport. Boach 5, Arna departure. 29 palms transition. Barrett 4 arrival. Departure frequency 125.02. Squawk 7002. I gotta work out how far 33 miles from Wig is. It's 18 miles from Wig to Danby, so another 15 miles on top of that would be 15 miles outside of Danby, on the west side of Danby, 
and it's 44 miles from Danga to Danby, so that's uh, about 30 miles out of Danga. So once we're 30 miles past Danga, right zero eight one, expect to run rate two five right. Then we shall uh, start on down. Okay, here's Danga. Let's do the heading mode. Well, we can actually skip heading mode. It looks like it survives, and we'll just join the zero four seven course. Cessna 618, Fox Street, Tango, runway 26 left, taxi via Whiskey. Alright, we'll pick up the video once we're about uh, 30 out of Tango. While we're waiting to get to 30 outside of Tango, we're around 14.9, thought we'd have another look at the panel. Now that the lighting is on. Point know about zero, you, have a heavy continue descent, maintain 3,000. 700, and it's this may me. take you outside of the Bravo airspace for about uh, 30 seconds. Lots of good stuff going on there. So the clouds are starting to lighten up a little bit as we get further east. Boeing 30 Bravo Heavy, 4 miles from Honda, turn left. Heading 270, maintain 3700 until established on the localizer, cleared ILS, runway 25, left approach. Alright, let's go ahead and start on down. I have a feeling it might take me a while to configure this, this descent, so let's set uh, altitude capture down to 12,000. Twin Star 7, Yankee Charlie, runway 29 right, cleared for the option. And we'll go vertical speed mode. And we'll just spin the pitch wheel Aircraft at Limburg for a radio check 5x5. Five five. And I believe the maximum you can set is 2,000 feet a minute on the pitch mode anyway. So I'm just dragging that little wheel. Right there. United 717, say type of uh, nav navigation equipment. So let's see what we're getting here. We gotta watch our RPMs. You can see the RPMs coming through 100% again. LA Center Jetstream 132 Kilo Tango is leaving flight level 250. Boeing 30 Bravo Heavy Ridge. Jetstream 2 Kilo Tango, thank you. And someone else calling? Okay, we're looking for 44 DME. I'm also waiting for the ADS at McCarran to come in. We've set 132.4. Alpha Tango, contact Hotter and Tower 121.1. 1. 132.4 on the COM2, and we did enable that, the reception of that. RPM is just a hair over 100 again, so pull more power. What we have to make sure is that we don't get into the beta mode. Cessna 717 on the power. power things. Yeah, we're pretty much at flight idle. We can't go a whole lot below that. If you do, it goes into beta mode and bad things happen. I've had that happen on final a bunch of times. It's been devastating. Here we are coming up on 43 DME. For Daggett. Cessna 8 Foxtrot Dango, climb and maintain 7,000. Can we go through a little bit of uh, visible moisture here? Cessna 7 Alpha Tango, numerous uh, targets, vicinity of Compton Airport, DFR. And Peter Heat's already on. Okay, we lost Daggett, that 44 DME. I'm going to make the turn here. We'll swap to using Nav 2. 033, we're good. Overshot it slightly based on that. Not too bad. Okay, we have now. 18 miles to go to get to WIG. At this rate, we're doing 1,500 feet a minute. Let's see, we've got to lose another 5,000 feet. It's about three and a bit minutes. Three and a bit minutes at 285. Let's see, that'll be between 12 and 15 miles that we'll cover. Closer to 15 than it is to 12. So, we're only just going to make this crossing at WIG, I think. If we can pull a bit more power, I will. Alright, we're good. Let's see if we can 
squeeze out a little bit more of a right of descent. Just stream two Kilo Tango, contact Las Vegas approach one two five point zero two. Twenty five oh two jet stream one three two Kilo Tango. Okay, we are negative on the ADS hasn't come in yet, so we'll just check in with them. Alright, that's the end of the icing potential right there. Las Vegas approach, jet stream 132, Kilo Tango 14600, this is for Wig at 12, negative ADIS. Jet stream 132, Kilo Tango, Las Vegas approach. Latest weather is of 1856, wind 190 at 19, gust wow. 28. Oh, jeez. Right. VFR skies, temperature 13, 2.05, altimeter 2968. Oh, Expect that's a big visual drop. approach, only 19. Left, unless you'd like something else. I uh, would like to request one nine right if we can and copy the weather. Thanks, just from two kilo tango. Just from two kilo tango, expect that. That is you verify it was two nine six eight on the altimeter. Now from Las Vegas, twenty nine sixty eight. Wow, thanks. Okay, then there we go. That is point uh, three zero drive with heavy. Welcome to LA. Exit left. Thanks to parking the alpha. Remain this frequency. Okay, set that to Boulder City. Alright, WIG is going to be 43 DME off of Boulder City, so we're actually in pretty good shape for the descent after all. And we should... oh, I never did altitude capture. Okay, we've added a lot of power, we're going to watch that RPM see how that holds as well as make sure we don't exceed VNE. Just Jetstream 2 Kilo Tango, fly heading 020, vector 4 approach, descend and maintain 7000. 020 down to 7, Jetstream 2 Kilo Tango. Alright, on one nine right, which will be eighteen seventy five is the common frequency. Okay, descending through ten thousand, we'll go a landing light on. And we'll do belts. Okay, we're on the zero two zero heading out of nine five for seven. Pressurization check. We should be able to start reducing the cabin altitude field Cessna elevation. Six one eight, Fox Tango, if you read this, I don't. Cessna 7 out of Tango, VFR traffic. We have to get 12, this right. 1 o'clock, 3 miles northbound indicates 3,900 type unknown, possibly landing Compton. Tango, Mexican Airport, 11 to 12 o'clock, and just under 1 5 miles. Report when you get it inside. We'll cover jet stream 2 Cal Tango. Thinking that might be it out there, we'll see. And we're looking at 7,000, that's coming up. Las Vegas departures, Australian 081 is with you, passing 5200. Australian 081, Las Vegas departure, radar contact, climb and maintain flight level 190. Climb and maintain flight level 190, Australian 081. Adding power. A little bumpy now. All right, this will be Henderson down here, I suspect. Just stream two kilo tango, descend and maintain five thousand. Out of seven for five, just stream two kilo tango. Okay, we have the tower set. Let's go through our descent checklist. Probably the light pressurization check. The ice is required. Peter heat is required. Sea pulse is required. Through ten thousand altimeter set. That's done. Although in the US it's flight level 180, seatbelt's on, that's done, landing lights on, TTL computers as required, descent checklist done. 
about 20 minutes late. Just from Tikula Tango Airport now 10 to 11 o'clock, 8 miles. I think it's just on the other side of this uh, pillar, but uh, yeah, we do have it in sight. Just from Tikula Tango. There it is there. Just from Tikula Tango cleared uh, visual approach from a 1 9 right, correction 1 9 left. And no further north than the Strata Street there. Okay, cleared visual 19 left, request 19 right, and uh, we don't have the stratosphere. Um, can you advise us when we're coming up a beam now? Okay, I think that was my bad. I cleared visual 19 right for Jet Stream 2 Kilo Tango, and let's say no further north than a uh, 3 mile final. Okay, no further north than 3 miles, Jet Stream 2 Kilo Tango, cleared visual approach 19 right. Okay, there'll be 19 right over there. Let's set. Uh, Pick up the Las Vegas VOR. Australian 081, 116.9. We'll use the DME off of that as an approximation of where we are. Contact LA Center, 126.35, Australian 081. 16.9, there's Las Vegas DME right there. And the VOR is. on the south corner of the field there. How long is this runway? Cessna 618, Foxtrot Tango, circle approach, do you read? The runway itself is over a mile long, so we can get to about full DME and be fine. Australian 081, LA Center, climb and maintain, flight level 300. Pulling power, start slowing. Alright, we're above freezing, so these clouds are not a problem. Although it's not awesome for the approach. So 280 should put us on the left base, and we shall continue the descent. Let's go down to three. And just from two kilo tank start returning base contact tower 118.75. 1875. We're in the base turn. Just from two kilo tank. Two gear some flap. Altitude capture. That should be descending. There we go. Las Vegas Tower, Jet Stream 132 Kill, left base, one on right. Jet Stream 132 Kill, Las Vegas Tower, wind 190 at 19, August 28, runway 1 on the right, good to land. The land, one on right, Jet Stream 2 Kill, Three down in green, we've got flaps 10, we can add a little bit more flap. And we'll disengage the MP. Cessna 717 off the angle, John Wayne Tower, enter a right 45 to runway 1 and a right, wind 140 at 9, runway 1 and a right, good to land. Pulls to the right quite a bit, but I'm aware of that. Okay, we can go more flap. Is that full flap there? Yep, it's full flap. And landing checklist. Before landing altimeters, checked autopilot off. Condition levers are set to flight. Flaps is required. And pre landing. Flaps to landing. Landing gear down are all set. Uh, 
Now let me find exactly what torque, this is going to be ugly for a second, I want to find exactly what torque causes beta. right around zero, in fact. Okay, we're to clear land on one nine right. A little fast. Pull power as much as I dare. 120 knots. The stall is 92. So 1.3 times that is 117-ish. So we're right around that. It's actually looking pretty good. Tower Jetstream 2 Gil Tango is clear to the right for signature. Jetstream 2 Gil Tango, taxi to signature via Sierra Hotel, I remain this frequency. Sierra Hotel with you, Jetstream 2 Gil Tango. Okay, after landing flap side, the ice is off. We'll do the strobes in a moment here. Strobes off, landing light off. Taxi lights on, don't need them. Condition levers down to taxi. Get straightened out here. Close enough. Condition levers down to taxi. That's done. Brakes definitely working. Transponder to standby. We don't do that at Vegas. And TTL computers are off. Afterline checklist complete. Jetstream 2 Kill Tango, I-5 ends with a pass. Jetstream 2 Kill Tango, Roger. Thanks. Okay. Let's stop it here. And for the shutdown, parking brakes set. We'll get the chocks in. Chocks. Are set. Taxi light off, seatbelts off. Transponder, radios off, and weather radar off. So we'll get all the radios off. Uh, back to boundary. That was always there. Generators off. Power lovers down, and we'll shut off the fuel. It's a good time to mention that we have these spring guards here. So I cannot physically click this switch, or this switch, or this switch, because the spring guards in the way. have to move that, and then we can shut it. And the hydraulics shut. Okay, engine's spinning down. Beacon off. Navigation lights as required, we take them all off. Lock the controls, avionics off. I'm going to skip locking the controls. Avionics off. Battery off. off. 
and electric master off. That was it. The i5 in the J Rollon JS32 Burbank 2 Vegas. Thanks for watching.